There was a time when FR Sky were king of the hills for RC transmitters and receivers. Other than Spectrum and the more affordable FlySky, it's what the majority of us used. It's what I started out with and used without question for years. But FR Sky went all Apple on us and started doing things I wasn't particularly comfortable with technically or the way that they treated customers and dealers and distributors. And I wasn't the only one. But fortunately, Radio Master gave us an awesome alternative. They adopted OpenTX on their radios, so we were familiar with how all that worked. But they also gave us great multi-protocol selection built into the transmitters. And they now have a great range of radios, particularly the TX16S, which I think has largely taken over from the FR Sky Tyrannis range. And now they've just replaced their discontinued entry point TX8 radio with this new 16 channel TX12. And this keeps the product range very nicely alive at both ends of the market. And this may be a budget radio, but it's got almost all the functions and features of the bigger full size radios. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Boat channel. I'm going to take a first look at this TX12 and give you my first impressions and I will be doing a follow-up to this when I've got this working with a quad that I'm currently building. The first thing you notice when you unpack this is just how small and light it is and it makes something like this X9D or a TX16 seem absolutely massive. But small isn't necessarily a good thing for transmitters. Sure, it's not going to take up a lot of room in your flight bag but small also means it could be fiddly to use. Now, I'm a pincher and the small game controller style transmitters like the x Lite that I used to have, they just didn't work for me. But this actually feels pretty good, even though these sticks are quite a bit smaller than what you get on something like this. And I think this works if you're a pincher or a thumber, but we'll find out soon. Now, this is a very light plastic case and with the batteries, it weighs, well, let's have a look here. I'm sure you can see that. 489 grams, which is about half what something like that weighs. This is just under a kilogram. It's 950 grams or so. And this doesn't come with any batteries when you get it. So you'll need to supply your own 18650 cells but they're pretty cheap these days and very easy to get hold of. So these fit in, if I can get that open, these fit in in the battery compartment down here. And the great thing is about this, that you can charge them with an internal charger in here. There's a USB port at the top. You can just plug in a standard USB-C charger and off you go. Oh, and also inside the battery compartment, just down there, a bit difficult to see, that's where the SD card goes. Now, on the top here is a connector for a removable antenna. All very neat. Don't forget to screw it in before you power the radio up though. You can cause some damage. And there's a trainer port on the top here as well, which is 
also very good. Now, if you turn this on, oh, didn't press it for long enough. You get the familiar OpenTX splash screen and it's a backlit monochrome display. Now, call me a Luddite if you like, but I actually prefer this to the fancy colour displays that tend to be the fashion on new radios. The colour displays look great, but I don't think there's any real advantage. Maybe it's just because they haven't really adopted the IPS higher res displays. Anyway, being monochrome does mean it keeps the price of this down, and this is perfectly readable in my opinion. You navigate the menus, just like on a TX-16. Just use this metal scroll wheel here, very positive, and you just click it to select the thing that you want. It's very good, and it's just all very nice. You've got all the other navigation stuff down here. There's a system button, and you've got the return button, page up, page down, and telly, and over here's the model button. And if you've used a TX-16, this will all be very familiar to you. Now something that they have changed is the momentary switches. They've replaced A and D, this one and this one, with push buttons. Now, I don't think this is necessarily any better or any worse. It's just a bit different. Then you've got four three position switches. You've got two on the top here and two on the front. And there's a small rotary control on each side. But if you've got massive hands, you may actually find those are a little bit hard to reach. And there's a folding handle on the back here, which doubles as a nice little stand to keep it at an angle when you're working outside and on the ground. And Oh, and there's a speaker just under the grill there. Now, these sticks are smaller than you get on larger radios, like this one, you can see. But they're perfectly fine. And for a budget radio, they're excellent. But don't be fooled, these aren't quite as smooth as you get with very high-end Hall Effect gimbal sticks. But this thing is about a quarter of the price of that. Overall though, this feels surprisingly solid for an entry-level transmitter. I mean, you can't twist it, it doesn't creak and squeak when you twist it like this. It's pretty nice. And now onto the really interesting bit. This is a multi-protocol radio and it's got the light multi-protocol module with one of the CC2500 RF chips. So the protocol selection is limited to FR Sky D8 and D16, Corona, Hitech, Futaba, Radio Link, Grauper, Hot and Red Pine, that's it. Now I say it's limited, but that is still pretty impressive for a budget entry-level radio. And if you want to find out more about exactly what's supported, I'll leave a link to the multi-module open source project website in the description. Now on the back, there's a JR slot for external modules. I'll just unclip that. And that means you can just plug in something like your TBS Crossfire. So you're not limited by what's included in here. It's very good. Now, this is running an official version of OpenTX. And talking to Radio Master, they've told me that all their radios run official versions. And they work with OpenTX pre-launch so that they can test it and sign it off on official releases. And that's one of the many reasons that I think Radio Master have been so successful. They buck the trend in terms of prices and features that people want, but they don't alienate themselves. They're working with all the open source communities and that benefits them and us. So what does this cost? Well, it's a remarkable 51 pounds or around $68, which is a staggering price for what you get. And I'll leave links in the description so you can check out the latest prices and offers. But at the moment, these are on pre-order only. And Radio Master have very kindly provided this so that I can have a first look but I think it's going to be extremely popular given the features and the price point. And I've had a few of the Radio Master T16 variants and they've been faultless, so I see no reason why this shouldn't be any different. I'll let you know in the follow-up video. 
I've got a build that I know this is going to be perfect for. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down here. If you want to see more like this, remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I post new content. And I'll see you next time.